Welcome Cody X. Uh, getting set up for measuring catalase activity using sodium alginate yeast spheres. In this video I'm going to show you how to make those yeast spheres and I'm going to show you the, the initial reaction that we're going to be investigating looking at uh, the enzyme catalase. And so we're using yeast as our model organism because yeast are eukaryotic and so they're closer to you and me than maybe using bacteria or other things and yeast have catalase. So if you remember from the videos and discussions on enzymes, uh, catalase, if it ends in ACE, it's probably an enzyme, and catalase is an enzyme that breaks down hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen gas. And so if you can use some culinary expertise in this case to take advantage of the um, spherification reaction of sodium alginate when it gets exposed to calcium ions, then you can make these spheres that are full of yeast. And then the yeast have catalase. And then if you put the yeast into a solution that contains peroxide, then the catalase will break down the peroxide and the process will make little bubbles on these yeast spheres. And if there are enough bubbles on these yeast spheres, then they'll become buoyant and they'll float to the top of a column of hydrogen peroxide. And that will be the way that we will not be directly measuring catalase and its um, reaction to break down hydrogen peroxide, but we'll be indirectly measuring it by the time it takes for these yeast spheres to rise. So let's get after it and start making some yeast spheres. So here we go. What you're going to need is a 2% <clears throat> a solution of sodium alginate, um, and you can maybe see that this stuff is very viscous and so to make that what I would suggest is you take your 2% by mass um, sodium alginate and water but you're going to want a stirring rod a magnetic stir stick or what you can do is you can sprinkle that sodium alginate over the top of some water cover it with some plastic wrap or parafilm and just let it sit overnight and when you come back you'll have uh, your sodium alginate so what you need is equal portions of the sodium alginate and 2% sodium alginate and then I have a 10% yeast solution. So with 10% yeast solution I did about 20 milliliters of sodium alginate so I'm going to stir that up a little bit and bring the total volume up to about 40 mils of yeast and then you can see how um, just viscous and unmixed that is. So what I'll do is take a disposable plastic transfer pipette and just mix that up until it is good and homogenized. So once that's good and homogenized, the uh, next thing you need is a 0.15 molar calcium uh, ion solution. So in this case, because we're not going to be doing any sort of culinary preparation, I used calcium chloride, but any soluble calcium salt. Um, in culinary preparations, you would want to probably use something like calcium acetate, which would be uh, non-toxic and uh, be okay for that. But since we're not doing this for culinary purposes, we're doing this for enzyme assay purposes, then that'll be okay. So then what you do is take that solution of sodium alginate and yeast that we just made and I took and cut the end off of a uh, transfer pipette and then I'm going to slowly but steadily drop that solution into the um, calcium ion solution and it should make nice regular round spheres and you can see those spheres forming if uh, you have constant nice pressure you can make spheres that have very very close to the same size which of course because of their surface area might matter and so I can pick that up and kind of maybe show you Whoop. And, of course, I spilled a little calcium. No big uh, solution. Not a big deal. That's why we have towels. 
So I'm going to continue to make a bunch of yeast spheres and this is only a hundred milliliters of this uh, solution. I can make enough yeast spheres to do this trial um, many, 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 many times. Um, I can probably make four or five hundred of these yeast spheres just with this amount of material I have here. So, now that you've got the yeast spheres made, what you've done is you've got your model organism for studying enzymes, that is the yeast, uh, contained in a um, in a sphere. And so now, what we can do is I have a approximately a 1% solution of sodium amalgamate, or not sodium amalgamate, excuse me, I have a 1% solution of hydrogen peroxide. And if those yeasts are alive, then, as they should be, then what I'll be able to do is drop one of those yeast spheres that's in the bottom of this and if I drop one of those yeast spheres into this column of hydrogen peroxide it should, the catalase in the yeast should break that down and in the process produce oxygen bubbles that will make those yeast spheres buoyant so they'll sink to the bottom and then over time they'll float back up so I'm going to cut the video off right here, and then I'm going to show you that reaction momentarily.